sometimes life comes along and just serves you up kind of a S-I-T-H sandwich. And you're the third monkey on the ramp on the arc. You just got to pick up your fisticuffs and start fighting back like it's starting to rain. Well, we're going to light our incense candle. This is uh, this incense candle here is scented in the flavor of El Chete Coax. That's the easiest way to put it. Yep. El Chete Coax. No doubt about it. This is your standard truck stop coax. It is garbage. Foam dielectric, stranded center conductor, it's got that going on for it. And a very cheesy, loosely braided shield. This is what I peddled as decent coax for a lot of years when I worked with the CB shop that we have here locally because that's all that we knew about. Well, time goes forward, get a little bit more educated. So we're going to file this in the appropriate bin now that we burn the incense candle. Okay? We go forward and we start learning about different kinds of coax. So I came out and I did this video here not too long ago. It was called Coax of the Gods. And this is the moment when you realize you didn't turn on your lapel mic, so you got to start over. <clears throat> we just burned our, in effigy, the, the incense candle there uh, for shitty coax. And it's just standard truck stop RG8 made by Tram Browning which isn't bad and it's not great. But like I was saying, I used to pedal a lot of that stuff and you go forward and you start learning about better, bigger and better and better coaxes. What's going on, gentlemen? Mark, Frank, yeah. So the first coax that I go out and I get exposure to, it's 9.09 at night and I got people calling me still right in the middle of my live feed. Oh, he's doing a live feed, I better call him. You get exposed to a little bit better coax. This is RG316. This is a single shield Teflon made, Teflon dielectric. So what we mean by that is this. We go and we strip the jacket away. It's silver with a Teflon center conductor. Okay, Teflon dielectric insulator and then a silver silver ten, uh, center conductor. This is good coax, but it's very lossy. Now remember, loss is a, a term that's used to express many different things in this universe. Um, and my bitch cheated on me. It's time to lose that bitch. Um, that kind of stuff. No, what this is is the description of how much signal you're going to lose either passing through it with RF induced onto the coax or signal that's going to be lost on the receive side as far as signal passing back to your radio or to your receiver equipment through it. Or the other form of loss is which is a heating issue where this turns into a resistor where you're pumping too much power through it. Okay, and this turns into a resistor and gets hot. That heat, that heating effect is considered loss. So there's many different variants of it. I know this isn't going to show up too well on the live feed camera, but it's going to show up really good on the high def YouTube channel video. This is actually silver, silver, not silver and tan. And these are single shielded coaxes. So if you took a hundred foot run of this and you put approximately a 30 dB signal through it, you're gonna have 10.9 dBs worth of loss. This is horrible for doing signal over a long distance. It's great for doing like some little two meter stuff or maybe from your radio to your driver to your, your amp or whatever, or short distances. That's what this is good for. It's almost completely indestructible. You can tie it in a knot, you can tie it in a bow, you can throw it over your shoulder like a continental soldier to your boobies hang low. The stuff is really stupid flexible and you can hide it anywhere. It works great for just a short little run. So we got this stuff. This is RG316DS, which stands for dual shield. There's two full shields on this piece of coax. Let's see if we can get them to separate for us. Come on, come on, 
Daddy wants to show you off to the universe. You're the sacrificial lamb. Come on. Okay. So that's shield number one. All right. And here's shield number two. And this is our dielectric, and then you have your center conductor. It's exactly the same size as the 316. The only difference is it's got dual shields. It's slightly less lossy. It doesn't give up as much to the coax angels, the gods, okay? It comes in at a whopping 6 dBs over 100 feet. Still incredibly bad. So, in between the coax of the gods <clears throat> and this stuff, you have coaxial cable like this, which is RG303. RG303 is some neat stuff in its own right. This is RG303. This is RG316. <laughs> Just to give you guys an inference in size. Okay? It is a single shield coax. It has a solid center conductor, which means this is a piece of steel that has been silver plated. Okay? What's wrong with RG8 Mini 8? Uh, besides it's flammable, um, it doesn't have very many burn uh, bend radiuses to it. Let's see who asked that question. I just read that out of the corner of my mind. Dakota. Okay. Doesn't have very many bend ratings to it. What I mean by bend ratings is this. Where we bend the wire back and forth. It's not very strong. It's got a foam dielectric insulator in it. And when stuff gets hot, it has a tendency to wonder. So this has 10 dBs, almost 11. This has like 6 to 9, depending on which data sheet you look at. This 303 here has got an attenuation of 8.6 over 100 feet. Now the RG8, it's way up there. It's like 20, 25 dBs. These are all still better than RG8 as far as signal loss goes. Your standard RG8. So now we're going to go to the coax of the gods. My favorite toy, my candy, my love, my angel, my dear. This is the one that coined the phrase coax of the gods. Of course, we all know that we're talking about my favorite angel of them all, the RG400, this stuff. Now, the difference between the 303 and the RG400 is significant. This is a dual shield also. Okay. Has a slightly larger dielectric to it, so first shield, second shield, and it's stranded, and the center conductor is almost twice the size of the 303. It can handle more power. RG400, eh, we're starting to get back into that attenuation game again once again. Remember, all the way up here in our 20s, then we come down to the, the 303, and now we're down to an 8.6. RG400 over 100 feet is a 4.4. And listen, what blew me away when I came out with the, the coax of the gods, boom, 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 coax of the gods, is how many people came to me and decided they were going to get rid of their regular RG8 coax or their RG213 and go to this for a long run from their station up to their antenna. We don't want to do that. It's too long of a run. It's too much of a signal loss. And I don't think I made that very clear in the first video, coax of the gods. The main thing I was stressing with the coax of the gods is it's flame proof, you can't break it, it's scratch resistant, it's got a million bend radiuses to it, it's made of silver, the weave is better, and I was trying to get people to think there's better coaxes out there than what you guys are used to using. And don't ask me about anything about LMR, I'm not impressed. It's got a foam dielectric, solid center conductor, it's cheaper, much cheaper, they claim it's got a lower loss rate, I don't believe it. That is what it is. The RG400 is good for jumpers around between your radio, your amplifier, your stuff in your station. For long runs, you're going to want to use bigger coax. This can handle a bajillion watts. We have all seen me use this jumper on my workbench in the last five years. I've put 32 pills through this. Now, the coax was so hot that you'd touch it and you'd leave a fingerprint on it, but the coax didn't fail. So, you know, we're talking like... 5,000, 7,000 bird through this little tiny stuff, but it's a three foot run. It's only a three foot run. That three foot run, the distance is what makes that possible to do with this little coax. 
So, I mean, if you're gonna go and run just a couple kilowatts, go get yourself some decent, like, 213 dual shield stranded center conductor, uh, get neoprene dielectric, not foam, and you'll be perfectly happy. It technically has a little bit less loss than this. So then you get the, you get the keyboard experts. We're all familiar with the keyboard expert. Man, I went and looked at data sheets for three hours and um, I slept at a Holiday Inn last night and it makes me an expert. Winning. And they come along, like I watched this one guy, it was so disparaging to me. This dude, I was so proud of this guy. He went out on his own without having to bug me or anybody else, got on the internet, used the internet as the tool that it's designed to be, not, not the, the massive cable porn delivery system that it has turned into be. Um, and figured out how to go get the right downsizers from DX engineering or uh, from Max Gain Systems. Figured out how to get the right coax connectors that I suggested in the video. Went out and found somebody that sold the coax and he's proud of himself. He made all his own jumpers in his own station, completely motivated, completely motivated by watching the one video. He thought, man, if that dumbass BBI can do it, I can do it too. And I loved it. I thought it was awesome. And he goes out and he completely rewires all of his entire station with RG400. Did all his own jumpers. And then he, he dropped in there as the last little note to the story. He says, yeah, I did a run up to my, top, up to my antenna with it. it. Works great. The guy's happy. It's going to last him way longer than the, the cheap Radio Shack stuff he had before. And then one of the keyboard warriors comes along and says, well, you'd be better off spending your money on RG 213, it's slightly less, it's got 0.25 of a dB less loss. You can't come down on the guy for making the statement because he's technically, technically correct, but at the end of the day, he just totally downed this guy. So this guy's all proud and trying to show off a little bit, and somebody comes along and hits him upside the head with a brick. What do you think that's going to do to that poor guy's motivation? Just saying, just keeping it all in perspective. So now, between the RG400 we now have the big daddy of them all, RG393. RG393 is 0.6 of a dB of attenuation over 100 feet in the HF bands at 0 through 30 megahertz. Not T bag. It's actually so impressive to me that it beats out Heliax. This is Superflex Heliax. This is 50 ohms, and this is some wicked stuff. This is 6142-85-5B 216M, but actually the number you need to look up is this one right here, the SJ-51, or 50A. Its attenuation in the HF band with 2.8 kilowatts to it is about 0.5, it's about half a dB. Pretty comparable to the RG393. The difference with the RG393 is what then they rate this coax, they rated it 25,000 watts, 25 kW versus 2. So there's a lot of different factors when it comes to looking at the data sheet. I got on the phone with my buddy, Kale Case, and we started having this discussion. And I love having discussions with him because he's so dry. He's like, well, dude, the data sheet is what it is. And I'm like, man, there's got to be more to it. <clears throat> I'm like, how can a dual, dual shielded 32 gauge stranded jacket have more loss than, let's say, RG213 dual shield made by Browning Corporation stranded center conductor? I couldn't get it. And then it finally clicked. It finally clicked. The thing they never put in the data sheet. All of these are rated at different power levels. It's in the data sheet, you just gotta look at it. This one's rated at 25 kW max rating, zero through 30 megahertz. This one's rated at 2.6 kW. And the same thing can be said about the 213. I didn't pull the data sheet for the 213, so everybody have fun with that. But the reason that we're standing here together, you, you and me, is because I have something else. This is truly some jaw dropping shit. This coax here is close to what we consider to be RG8X mini coax. And it shares all the lovely characteristics of this 
but has less loss than this. It is stranded. It is braided. It is quad shielded or three shield tri shielded. This is some good shit. But we've got even better shit than this. This is good shit. Okay, this is made by the Chrysalis Company. Um, this particular piece is made by Franklin. This is 311501 aircraft military spec coax. This here. It has some good stuff. Its attenuation is at 150 megahertz, 2.7 dB, and 0 through 30 megahertz. It is, get this, 1 dB. So it puts it in the realm of this coax here. Solid jacketed coax. So it puts it in this realm. The difference is this is foam dielectric. This is an aluminum center conductor that has been copper clad and will break. This is crap. But it works well for some low power applications. This stuff is cool. And I, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. My buddy Zane at Big Rig Radio in Phoenix, Arizona, um, went into an aircraft store and he bought some of this stuff and we started looking at it and working with it and we realized what we had. Look at how tight the weave is on that. Let me drop the ISO gain down on this camera so you guys can see the weave. Look at that. That's just one shield. Okay, so we're going to bunch up stranded shield. You know what, here, let's do this. Let's just cut it off. It's our stranded shield, we'll set that aside. Now, underneath that stranded shield, we've got ourselves some foil, but it's not like the LMR garbage. You know, where it's just kind of slightly wrapped and then they put, stick them all over it. See, the trick is to this is we got to unspool this like a There it is. Man, I don't want to come off. I don't know. Do you guys really care? I don't know. I hope so. So it's two layers of wrap foil around there we go there we go now this braid that's in here is something to behold so check this out So we're going to peel all the foil off. Now if we look really close, you'll see it's got another stranded, what they call flat wire in the data sheet. Another flat wire braid underneath it. Look at that. This is silver, you guys. Then on top of that, it's got a heat insulator that is spiral wrapped, and then underneath that is Teflon. Now, it's a solid center conductor on this. Now this is some good stuff. So we're gonna show you that it's got shield number one, shield number two, shield number three, Teflon wrapped, and then Teflon center conductor. Now that's cute and all, but for those guys that actually wanna run some distance and run a little bit of power, we have this. This would be on par with this. So, once again, made by the Franklin Company, you'll find this underneath 311201 coax. So, point 0.3, 0 through 30 megahertz, point 0.3 of a dB loss. 
it's superior to this in its signal loss cap capabilities, and it's superior to this. This can handle more power. This can handle like four times the amount of power this can over a run. So let's try this little experiment one more time, you and me here live on camera. We'll slice it. We'll dice it. This is soft, drawn copper. Very soft. Very soft. So once again, we've got our braid, our little flexible braid. Ah, there it goes. So now we're going to grab our foil. We're going to unwrap our foil. Shield one, shield two, shield three. Teflon wrap. Then down to our Teflon itself. First insulator of Teflon. Another Teflon wrap. And this is literally like plumber's tape, PTFE tape. Then we got ourselves another Teflon liner, and then our stranded center conductor. I am sure that if I laid the marker out and said there is a better constructed, there is not a better constructed coax out there with more insulator value than this, there's going to be some guy go out and try and find it. But this is going to be hard to beat. This is going to be really hard to beat. Outer jacket insulator. Let's pan over here. Outer jacket insulator. First shield, second shield, third shield. Insulator, 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 center conductor. This is some good stuff. And it is not flammable. Not flammable. Not flammable. Not flammable. Not flammable. Flammable. So before I let you all go, I want to give you a quick demonstration on how to put this coax together if any of you guys choose to buy, to buy this stuff. Now, listen, in full disclosure, this thing, this coax is a little spendy. <clears throat> I mean, like, like a lot spendy. But it's really, really good. So this is your standard RG8 Mini X reducer okay and all we've done is we've taken we folded the shield back bunched it up and because it's mostly Teflon we don't really have to worry about it burning too awful bad right we learned that on the coax of the gods well, this being coax of the gods video number two we're going to capitalize on that same effect and we're going to just let the solder flow between the shield our Teflon insulator and let the downsizer suck in flux, suck in the lead, suck in the solder. Then all you got to do is screw it in your end. Tighten down as normal. Back fill your holes with solder. Fill your center pin full of solder. Now, the bigger stuff here, the 311201, we've discovered if you fold over both the shields, you can just very calmly and normally, like you do your regular RG8, thread this on up in here. 
Now they do make an, act, an actual reducer for this, and I don't know what the number is right off the top of my head. You thread this thing in here, and then fill in your holes as normal, and get on with your business. It makes a perfect connection because you're soldering up here and filling in this void, and you're filling in this center pin. Now, this shares the same heat resistant properties as the RG400. It's a lot less lossy. It is stupid flexible like the RG400. But if you're realistically going to go pay this amount of money for this coax, this high-end, ultra, super fancy falutin coax, you probably can get away with using something a lot cheaper that's going to come into the same wheelhouse. But it's not going to be heat resistant and so tolerant to high temperatures, abrasion resistant, and so on. You're going to have to be a little bit more delicate with it. But for the record, I want to really make this clear. The coax of the gods is some neat stuff our RG400, where we initially started with this whole saga. Is it the best for long runs of, co long runs of coax? No, absolutely not. Do you want to go and put like 7 million watts through it? No, absolutely not. Y you just don't. You want, you want it over a 100 foot run, maybe a couple kilowatts through this. I mean, real realistically. Would you be better off cost-wise per foot? Yeah, you could probably get away with using 213 dual shield or maybe some LMR 400 or whatever. <clears throat> a data sheet, people only look at certain specific numbers on the data sheet and most of the time they don't want to sit down and suck it in as a whole. So let's take the RG393 for example. Uh, 0 to 30 megahertz is good for 25 kW max, but then its power capability severely falls off in frequency after that and it it's really, it's still fairly lossy coax for what it is. You can go and get foil coax and it's going to have lower signal loss over a hundred foot run, but it's not going to hold as much power. But really, if you're going to run 25 kilowatts, you should probably be thinking about going to like RG, you know, like 219, 218, something like that, or inch and a quarter, inch and five eighths. They didn't make Heliax because it was so good at conducting the high RF output. It, it's, they made it so that it would lose, not have so much signal loss coming down from the antenna. The side effect is when you go bigger, you get more surface area, so therefore you can hold more power. In my opinion, this is about the best coax money you can buy, honestly. The best, what I consider to be high to, high to, high to mid-range coax for jumpers, this stuff right here. Three foot, six foot kind of jumpers inside the shack, this stuff right here, it'll never break. I've been using the same coax jumper on my workbench now for three and a half years. And think of how many times I take this on and off shit. That's what makes this the coax of the gods. It's heat resistant. You can put a buttload of power through it through a short distance. It's Teflon, strand and center conductor, dual shield with a really tight, 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 tight jacket. Long distance, not the best. Well, guys, I'm not going to keep you any longer. I appreciate you tuning in to follow along. And sometimes you just got to arm yourself with knowledge, put up your fist to cuffs and be willing to fight back and say, hey, there's better stuff out there. And just because people want to go and make a negative comment, well, you should have been better off. You would have spent your money over here. I always thought that was kind of ironic. Who am I to say to anybody that they would be better off spending their money anywhere? Just saying. I didn't make the comment. I'm just reacting to the statement. And I was more or less depressed that the guy was more interested in being right than in his desire to try and promote the hobby, share knowledge, and make people feel good about the achievement that they had done. I, on the other hand, I'd rather make people feel good, motivate them to get more into the hobby, teach them how to put their own coax ends on. It makes radio live longer. Because remember, at the end of the day, sometimes being right isn't the end of the argument. And it isn't really always the best thing to be. Appreciate every single one of you guys. Be good.